Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another example how to integrate 1 over 1 plus a sine of ax. Now the trick here, since we have a 1 plus a sine of ax in the denominator, is to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. In other words, multiply this times 1 minus the sine of ax divided by 1 minus the sine of ax. This of course is equal to 1 so we haven't changed anything but notice how that changes the integral. So this becomes equal to the integral in the numerator we end up with 1 minus the sine of ax and in the denominator this becomes 1 minus the sine squared of ax of course we still have our dx and then in the denominator notice we can change that to a cosine square of ax so this becomes the integral of 1 minus the sine of ax divided by the cosine squared of ax uh, dx. And then once we have it in that form, we can write it as two separate integrals. So this can now be written as the sum of the first integral, which is 1 over the cosine squared of ax dx minus the integral of the sine of ax divided by the cosine squared of ax dx. And now we have to remember the tricks to integrate these two. For the first integral, it was going to be dividing both the numerator and the denominator by the sine squared of ax. So let's do that. So this is equal to the integral of 1 over the sine squared of ax divided by the cosine squared of ax divided by the sine squared of ax dx minus and then the second integral what we can do there is notice that if we let u equal the cosine of ax then du will be equal to the let's see here the negative sine of ax or the negative a times the sine of, of ax so let's do that over here for integral number two this is integral number two right here we can go ahead and we're going to let u equal the cosine of ax then du is going to be minus a times the sine of ax dx now notice we already have the sine of ax dx in the numerator but we don't have the negative a so we need to add the negative a so we're going to do that so add the negative a times the sine of ax dx divided by the cosine square of ax of course since we multiply the numerator by negative a we have to multiply the denominator by negative a so this becomes a plus because we already had a negative 1 over a so the negative of the negative a cancels out the negative from this right here and now we can go ahead and integrate this integral right here. On this integral we're going to rewrite it so this becomes equal to the integral of the cosecant square the cosecant square of ax divided by the denominator is going to be the cotangent square of ax dx and then our second integral is going to be plus 1 over a and if we integrate this this becomes hmm let's see here the integral of u to the minus 2 times a du so this is u squared that goes to the numerator becomes u to the minus 2 and the numerator was the du so we can integrate that so this becomes equal to we're going to leave it like this for a moment uh, that's going to be the cosecant square of ax divided by the cotangent square of ax dx notice we're going to leave this alone for now and this becomes u to the minus 1 divided by negative 1 so it becomes minus 1 over a times 1 over u plus a constant of integration and I guess we should call it c2 because that was our integral 2 so this becomes equal to the integral of the cosecant square of ax divided by the cotangent square of ax dx and then we have minus 1 over 
a and u was equal to the cosine of ax plus a constant of integration. So we've taken care of that second integral. Now we need to take care of the first integral. So here's our first integral. And we're going to let the denominator here, let u equals the cotangent of ax. Then du is going to be equal to the hmm, a times the cosecant squared of ax dx. So notice we almost have the entire du, we're missing an a. So we have to multiply the numerator by a, divide by an a, and we get the following. So this is equal to 1 over a times the integral of a times the cosecant square of ax dx divided by the cotangent square of ax. So this is basically du over u squared, just like we had over here. This becomes u to the minus 2. So the integral of that, and we can't forget the solution, so minus 1 over a times the cosine of ax plus the constant of integration of the second integral, but now we're ready to integrate this one right here. So this becomes equal to 1 over a times a negative, because when we integrate a u to the negative 2, we introduce a negative. So that means we're going to end up with a... Um, negative times negative 1 over the cotangent of ax minus 1 over a times the cosine of ax plus the constant of integration of the first integral plus the constant of integration of the second integral. And then, of course, we can simplify that a little bit by moving, let's see, by rewriting that. So this can then be written as I'm going to pull out a minus 1 over a, minus 1 over a, times 1 over the cotangent becomes a tangent of ax, and 1 over the cosine becomes the secant. So that would be plus the secant of ax, and we'll combine the two counts of integration and call it c, and this then would be the integral, the result of the integral we started with, the integral of 1 over 1 plus the sine of ax, and that's the result. And that's how it's done.